The aim of the Turkish state is to expand their interest in Middle East because they do believe there's a turmoil the stabilization of in Middle East and Turkey want to implement the dream of Ottoman Empire, former Ottoman Empire on in Middle East. And for the first they tried to occupy northern part of Syria, which is Rojava, but then there was a huge resistance from YPG, YPG and then also SDF, the Syrian Democratic Forces. And the second part Turkey is trying to occupy is northern Iraq, uh, which is a part of autonomy of Iraq. And, but the guerrilla uh, fighters of the PKK prevented Turkey to occupy this part of Kurdistan. And then of course the biggest part is the Bakur, is Turkish occupied part, and Turkey has, a, has a concentrated in war against in civilian areas, also military areas. Uh, we have now more than 5,000 political prisoners in Turkey, and every day there are clashes. And the new kind of method which Turkey is using is killing politicians by drones in Rojava and in Sinjar, in the region of Yazidis in northern Iraq, South Kurdistan. And uh, last year in October, Turkey started to use chemical weapons against the PKK fighters. So the whole focus of the Turkish regime under its president Erdogan is to um, commit this uh, genocide by time. Uh, divide in time to prevent Kurds to find a solution for the Kurdish uh, problem. The colonialism over the Kurds have been different than the colonialism over Basque country or Catalonia or Ireland or Scotland. The, the colonial, specific colonialism of Turkey regarding the Kurds was completely denying the existence of a nation. So we don't exist as a people of 50 million. But with the foundation of the PKK in 1978 until today, we are now visible. So nobody can deny us, but also nobody is ready to recognize us as an existent people. That's the problem now. We are looking for a stateless democracy, which we call democratic confederalism, means we can implement democracy without changing the borders. Uh, seeking for equal rights of the Kurds and other components of Turkey. It's not just Kurds, but there are also other components of Turkey, the Armenians, the Arabs, and then different faiths like the Alawites, the Yazidis, the Christians. All of them need um, radical autonomic rights. We call it the democratic autonomies. So there is a need of democratic transition of the Turkish state. So, and it seems that uh, Turkey still play an uh, important role for the NATO and also for the Council of Europe. That's why they're keeping silent when Turkey is uh, committing war crimes. With the revolution in Rojava, in Bakur, Kurdistan, the democratic transition in the Kurdish society through the women's movement, the improvement of social ecology and new ideas in the Kurdish society strengthened the Kurdish people. When I speak about the well-organized people and uh, well people who are very politicized, it's because uh, the women play the key role in social transition, democratization of society, uh, defeating every kind of um, patriarchal um, mentality customs in society. If we are asking for a kind of democratic future for the whole society, that means, uh, or if we want to overcome capitalism, so we have to first overcome patriarchalism because it's the father of capitalism. The Kurdish people's leader, Abdullah Öcalan, I would say he is the key actually for the women's issue. He said, um, if we are asking for democracy, then first we have to implement experience democracy and that's mean internally, domestically. So if you ask for more civil, uh, civil liberties, then what about you, part of your society, half of the society are women. So we start democracy with women and these uh, open new gates in the horizon of the, of the society. A lot of energy come up, energy which was hidden behind patriarchy. So the things what we are um, implementing locally in Kurdistan, 
can be also a contribution to world problem of uh, women. We should look for solutions of based on coexistence. Because capitalism, uh, the capitalist states are using nationalism as an instrument to divide society, the components of society. But, and by doing this, they're weakening the society, using different components against each other. So therefore, Öcalan uh, was suggesting the curse to overcome any kind of nationalism. It's not help helpful for the society, for the grassroots, because it's an instrument of capitalist states for weakening the society. <clears throat> That's why a model of coexistence uh, means um, autonomies and autonomies, which we had uh, experienced first in Turkish part of Kurdistan and then later on in Rojava. So it means bringing the people together. So it wouldn't be enough that we Kurds just liberate ourselves. We need to liberate also the people around us or the people who are sharing with us but are ethnically not Kurds. Like we have in Rojava Arabs, Armenians, Assyrians um, and other uh, ethnic components. We have also uh, just in Kurdistan, eight different faiths. So we say to the people, look, we have a lot of experiences. America don't bring democracy. Europe don't bring democracy. And we don't need to learn from them democracy. We have experience of thousands of years of coexistence. We should go to our own history, how we survived for thousands of years as uh, different ethnic groups and religion groups. So we have a ground to come together. Uh, and I think uh, this process is continuing and we have the right time now because, as you said, the capitalist system is in a very, very deep crisis because most of the uh, nation states of, Europe, of, of capitalism, they are defeating each other, they are fighting each other, they are in competition to each other. They don't take care on the grasses, on the people. So everything what they say about democracy is just verbally. Some companies in the Basque country are supporting the Turkish army and Turkish military, so stopping the uh, Basque companies and the banks uh, helping the, the very weakened Turkish regime. For example, recognition of the autonomy of Rojava in the Basque parliament will be uh, su support. And also, of course, um, now we have two main campaigns. One is the listing of the PKK from the European Union's list of terrorist organizations. Will be good if people in Basque country will sign. And the other is also standing for the freedom of the Kurdish people's leader, Abdullah Öcalan. If we achieve to liberate him, we will liberate also the other thousands of political prisoners in Turkey. Mm -hmm.